What's up, Wolfpack fam? It's your boy Kid back at it again. Hope you're doing well. Continuing my journey of Dad's Army with the crew. You know, what adventures are going to lie? You know, what, what adventures are going to happen on this week's episode? I got to stay tuned to find out. Ladies and gentlemen, snack sis not included. Damn it. You got to bring your own. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. It is absolutely free to do. Shout out to the patches as well. Thank you for your extra support. Links are always in the description section if you're curious for that. That's just another way of helping out the channel. You simply help out the channel by liking, commenting, sharing, and you know, et cetera, et cetera, and subscribe. So let's get this journey started. Snacks not included. Let's freaking go. But he comes home each evening and he's ready with his gun. So who do you think you are kidding, Mr. Hitler? about it that in modern warfare communications are vital <clears throat> and that's why I've sent a strong letter to the war office demanding that we should have wireless sets without delay what happened to that very strong letter to the war officer demanding Bren guns sir? we're not discussing guns now Wilson <laughs> <coughs> now in the event of the wireless sets not arriving before Adolf kicks off <laughs> I intend to capture some from his first wave Sir, I should like to volunteer to be in charge of the Nazi wireless set capturing party, sir. I should enjoy that. <laughs> yes, all right. Well, well, that's something we can come to much later on. I would like to suggest, sir, that we only use our bayonets so we do not destroy the Nazi wireless machines with our bullets. Yes, it's a very good suggestion. I'll make a note of that. Sir. Right. Now, the point is this, that having obtained the wireless sets, how do we send a message? Uh, well, they, they usually say, call in all cars, call in all cars, there's a stick-up at the corner of 93rd and 7th. <laughs> I don't think that would help us very much, Frank. <laughs> stick up to an old Jones who gets let loose with his burnet. Yes, all right. <laughs> now, I have studied the correct procedure, so if you'll all pick up your wireless sets, I'll, uh, I'll show you. Incidentally, <laughs> I'm very grateful to everybody who supplied these uh, cocoa tins and treacle tins. I see some of them had some old English humbugs in. I, I, I was lost to stop out of a tooth with an old English husband. Yeah, toffees are worse, sir. I broke me up a set with a toffee once. I once choked on a gobstopper. That's right, Frank. I've forgotten that. You're quite right, I've forgotten. And I tried to bang me on the back. And I met him for banging me too hard. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. Don't let's go. Marshmallows. Hmm? Have we got Marshmallows. Uh, kinder on the teeth. Good. Now, <laughs> as you no doubt remember from your childhood, if you speak into the tin at one end, you will hear the voice in the tin at the other, provided, and this is most important, provided that you keep the string absolutely tight. Turkish delight was yeah. nice and soft. Fraser, Fraser. <laughs> what have I just said? We've got to be absolutely tight. No, 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 I'm asking <laughs> you. I'm, I'm, what I'm sorry, sir, uh, my mind was wandering. Now, as you know, with the wireless set, you cannot speak and hear at the same time, which is why the correct procedure has to be adopted. So, if you'll just... Uh, Hang on there, I'll show you what the... <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you what the trick to see here. I love this show. What was that red thing there? Right, thank you, Jones. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, let me first set the switch set on. We're in the listening position, so everybody listen. All right? I think I... <laughs> Sorry, sir, my communication cord's a bit short, sir. <laughs> All right, everybody in the listening position, please. I think I can hear the sea. You must have a pilchard tin. <laughs> Wilson, Wilson, put that to your ear, will you? I'm sorry, sir, but there's a little bit of an old English humbug stuck at the bottom of this tin. I'd rather like to have it. Hook it out with this yeah, paper. Look, look, leave it where it is for the time being. Wilson! All right, all right. Put it your ear, Sorry, sir, we'll do it later. Right, right. Now, to commence proceedings, I put the mic in front of my mouth and I speak into it thus. Hello, Station Charlie One. Hello, Station Charlie One. Report my signal. Hello, Station Charlie One. Over. Oh, is it quite clear to everybody? Speaking for myself, I never heard a single one. <laughs> <laughs> I heard your voice with the tin, sir. It was terribly good. It really was. Absolutely one. Yes, well, what I was saying was, hello, all stations, Charlie One. Hello, all stations, Charlie One. Report my signals, all stations, Charlie One. Over. What's Charlie One? <laughs> well, Charlie One is, uh, is Sergeant Wilson's call sign. I was using the call sign. Well, how do we know who's who? It's perfectly simple, really. I'm saying hello to all of you, you see. And... Wilson is Charlie 1, Fraser Charlie 2, you're Charlie 3, Charlie 4, Charlie 5, and so on. But there's ring to me, sir. Uh, why don't you say hello, Charlie 2? 
Because you would say that if you were speaking to me. You would say, hello, Charlie, too. Ah, you mean I say hello to me? No, no, you're saying hello to me. <laughs> Why don't I say hello, Charlie, one? Well, because, uh, because that's not the way it's done. <laughs> Excuse me, are we, are we all Charlie ones too? <laughs> now, this is a matter of the time here that all this side is headquarters and we're all saying hello, all stages Charlie one. All right, now let's do this. Just a moment, sir. Yeah. Uh, my name really is Charlie. Now, does, that, does that make any difference? No, not at all. <laughs> right, come on. All together now. Hello, Yes, that wasn't really very good, was it? Yes, it was. <laughs> Why can't we use Boy Scouts, sir? They can run very fast and they can nip through little holes in the hedges, sir. Boy Scouts are very good at that sort of thing. Shall we have another go? Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this miss. Hello. Hello, Mr. Yeatman. Hello, Mr. Rogers. Sorry to hear about your headquarters last night. Yeah, blown to bits it was. Did you suffer any personal loss or injury? Only my spare trousers. What a blessing you wasn't in them. I'll say a splinter went right through the seat. <laughs> the good Lord must have been watching over you. He was. I was in the boozer. He moves in a mysterious way. His wonders to perform. Yes. Is, uh, is Napoleon in? Yes, but you're not to let him worry you, because the vicar says you can use his office and anything else you want. Yes, well, I better work with the town clerk, so I shouldn't have any trouble. Well, you must have somewhere to do your air raid precautions, mustn't you? Otherwise, where will we all be? Well, thank you, Mr. Yeatman. I'm very glad you're lottery here. Mm. It's been all tribulation with Mannering. Has it? Mm. Right. What's tribulation? Well, it's a cat. <laughs> <laughs> right, now, we'll follow with you, Wilson. Right. Oh, just Speaking. a minute, sir, before mm. you go any further. Do you know, sir, if you pull these through in a certain way, sir, they make a noise like a chicken who's about to pass an egg. Do you know, sir? I think you and I better have a talk in the office, private-like. I don't wish to speak to you at all. Well, you're going to have to, so let's get cracking. Take over, Wilson. Right. Well, don't take a minute. Hold that. Yeah. Right, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Now, look here, Hodges. No, you look here, Mannering. My headquarters has been put out of action, and I have official permission to use these premises here. On whose authority? See for yourself. Yep. Now, I'm, I'm a reasonable sort of man. I know you and I have had our differences in the past, but we are both on the same side, and I want to be generous. I don't want to, uh, well, I don't want to, uh, you know, be standoffish, and uh, I'm prepared to go shares with you. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Now, this half here with your chair, you can have. This half here is me, right? Draw a line here like this. Got it? There we are. Down the Just a moment. What, what are you doing? Well, now, when it comes to the desk, you keep your stuff over there, and I'll keep my stuff over here, right? How dare you mark my desk? I've only been trying to fair and reasonable. You've got this out, right? Yeah, and I shall chalk it again. <laughs> oh, my God. I can chalk quicker than you can rub, mate. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo. be enough of that. Now, you probably noticed both the doors here are in my arm. Now, I want to be fair, so I'm going to draw a chalk line on the floor like this here. Here we are, and another one like this here. Now, that's Tom Tiddler's ground. Oh, I've had enough yeah, of this nonsense. You're standing on my bit. Get off. <laughs> now, Whoa. The only thing I have to insist on is the telephone. That has to be on my side. Oh, no, it doesn't. That is my artery of communication. If Hitler invades anywhere along the coast first, that is how I shall learn of it. Yes, and it's my artery every time the siren sounds. If Hitler's coming, I'll take a message for you. <laughs> <laughs> that stays there, and I'll give you five seconds to get out of my office. One, two, three, four, five. I'm not going. <laughs> oh, all right. Wilson! Jones! Escort this person from my headquarters. Right. Look, mate, I'm staying. This is my headquarters. Carry my orders out. All right, so would you mind awfully leaving the office, as the captain says? No, I've got official permission. There it is, in black and white. <laughs> if you don't move out of here, you'll get this right up to you, and you will not like it. <laughs> now, look here, Gandhi. What? <laughs> look, you have another the last of this. I'm telling you, you have another the last of it. Get yeah. off. Well done, Jones. Hell they yeah. Love the old cold steel, sir. Most of them cannot countenance it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's resume our lecture. 
He's done it this time. He's done it. What, whatever's up, Mr. Rogers? You look as if you're a soul in torment. Fetch him. Fetch the vicar. It's that man ring. Oh, I should have to sit down. You, I'll have one of my funny turns. You sit down here and I'll get his reverence. He threatened me with a bayonet. Never. It's true, a bayonet. He who liveth by the sword shall die by the sword. And that goes for bayonets and all. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're not going over when I say over. So let's do it in turn, shall we all? My file will say it first, and then Wilson's file will say it after. All right. all right, one, two, three. Over. 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 Yes, that's better, that's much better. I think I've got the hang of it, sir. Can I do it on my own? Well, we're not quite ready for that, Jones. Oh, let me go solo, let me go solo, sir. <laughs> oh, very well. This should be good. Hello, all stations, Charlie One. Hello, all stations, Charlie One. Report my signals, all stations. Charlie, one, over. Blimey. Good. That was very good, Joe. Yeah, thank you, sir. Fuck yeah. Excellent. You got that quite correct. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they all thought I couldn't do that. <laughs> you did it beautiful. Yeah, I'm not such a fool as I may think I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now let's try it again. Tighten your strings. Right, sir. Right. Now keep the strings <laughs> tight. Whatever you... I have given Mr. Hodges here permission to use my office. Now I understand he's been molested. Look, Vicar, I'm very busy. Supposing I see you in my office in 20 minutes' time. It is not your office, it is my office, and I have lent it to Mr. Hodges. Uh, what did I say? I told him, didn't I? I told him. You did. You are interrupting vital training for the defense of the realm. Kindly go away. No, I will not. And I want to get to my office, so kindly take all your silly little bits of string out of my way. I will not. Well, I shall report you to the bishop and to the police. Oh, that was a damn childish. Don't you profane his reverence like that. Don't let's have any impertinence from you either. Oh, so that's the way it is, is it? Follow me, Vicar. <laughs> oh, no, bro. <laughs> Oi. One way to get through, guys. Well, I think it's a cheek, Hodges, using this as his ARP headquarters. Well, I can't see old Mannering being pushed around much longer. I mean, after all, he's tried to cooperate, but what can you do with a bloke like Hodges? I mean, he's so dead common. You're right there, Joe, he is common. One thing I can't stand is common people. <laughs> I know that you've been quite fair. Now, Mr. Hodges does a very good job as ARP warden, and it's a dangerous job, too. Well, I don't say he don't do it well. All I say is he does it uncouth. If only Mr. <laughs> Mannering had put a curse on him. A curse? Yes. How can he put a curse on anybody? I've seen it done, no? When? Mm, nigh on 50 years ago, when I was trading coral in the South Seas with a friend of mine. <laughs> was that the one that got eaten by a squid? <laughs> no, sir. It's a different friend. Jethro, his name was. One day, we were anchored off a wee island about uh, 20 miles west of Samoa. And Jethro told me that he'd heard that there was a ruined temple in the center of the island with a huge idol that had a ruby the size of a duck's egg set in its forehead. She was determined to get it. So as soon as it was dark, we rowed ashore, armed to the teeth, and set off through the jungle to find the temple. After about two hours hacking our way through the undergrowth, we came to a clearing, and there was the temple, the ruined temple, covered with jungle creepers. The place was deserted. We crept inside, and there it was, a huge idol with a great ruby in its forehead. As the shafts of moonlight struck down through the holes in the roof. It burned like fire. Jethro gave a cry of triumph, jumped up on the idol, and hacked the ruby out of its forehead with his knife. All this time, I could feel eyes, horrible unseen eyes, staring at us. I could stand it no longer. I shouted, let's get out and we turned to go, and then we saw it. Barring our way in the doorway was the witch doctor. He gave a scream that turned my blood to ice. He shook a bunch of bones in Jethro's face, and he cursed him. <laughs> After all these years, I can, I can still hear that terrible curse. Death! 
me scream. Death! The ruby will bring you death! Death! <laughs> Did the curse come true, Mr. Fraser? I son the dead. He died. Last year, he was 86. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. 86. Ball in his feet, like, open order. Take the mark from me. <coughs> All right, thank you, Paul. Now, I've had a word with Area HQ, the Civil Defence people, and the Secretary of the Council, who happens to be fellow Rotarian. <laughs> and I can assure you that I give them a piece of my mind. And these ARP people will be cleared out of here just as soon as possible. But not this week. But not this week. All right, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you can't wait to say so that. So in the meantime, we must behave in a true Christian manner, and as far as possible, ignore them. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> started it. Yeah, well, you were taking up more than you were after the all. I've got twice as many troops as you. Call these troops? Call blimey the Bath Chair Fusiliers. <laughs> How would you like a bunch of fives up the Uda? I think it's already had one, Joe. Oh, that's brave, isn't it? Ten to one. Listen, buddy, this town's not big enough for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> not start anything. How dare you. <laughs> Hello, they're here. Saved by the bell. Right, I'll sort you out later. Get your post, man. Right, in duty, man. This is Cole on the telephone, Miss Robinson. Take charge of the incident, man. Taylor, make up your defence points. And a medical tea rooms and patrols of letters, Timothy White. General, get the fire gun. We might be here all night. Gets a bit parky later on. All right. Jones, keep your sector in reserve here. Very good, sir. Keep that over your side. Now, look, Hodges. I'm doing my best to tolerate your presence, but you're being absolutely insufferable. You're never going to get a light like that. I mean, after all, the wood's damp and the chimney's cold. What you want's a fire lighter? I haven't got any. Oh, well, I can help you there. There you go. That'll get it going before you can say gunpowder. Ninepence to you. Oh, thanks. Hey, Joe! What? Hold on, son. That's treating with the enemy. Yes, right. Right, thank you very much. Yes, let me have a report in the morning. Thank you. Right. Oi! Right. Cut that out. Not during an alert. I shall be receiving a constant stream of reports on that tonight, and I shall be receiving my orders from the War Office through my superior officer. Warmington ARP. <laughs> Number one platoon headquarters, Warmington on Sea Home Guard. Uh, yes, it is for you, Captain Waring. Of course. Good evening, sir. Captain Manning here. Oh. <clears throat> Hello, Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> you can pack that in carrying on and chats with your bits of stuff. Do you mind? This happens to be my good lady. Yes, well, tell her to cut it short. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't... What? Of course I can't come home. Not just now. Well, okay, if you're really frightened, why don't you sit in the cupboard under the stairs, as usual? <laughs> I, I'm sure a bomb is far more dangerous than a mouse. <laughs> no, careless talk costs lives. Hey, I'll try another one. Oh, sir. You know the trouble? I expect some sparrows laid a nest somewhere up there. They do a lot of that. They lay a nest, you know, sparrows do it. Oh, up good. the top of the chimney. Well, we can have some roast sparrow. Very tasty. <laughs> Very sweet. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's better. Simon. Woo! Hey, what are those made of, Joe? Well, they're mostly made from incendiary bombs that have been damaged by fire. What's this? What's this? That stove is not to be ignited without the consent of the vicar. Hey, what are you talking about? It's only a fire. Oh, it'll have to be notified. There'll be a rumpus. Who lit it? The wardens. The wardens, did they? Cheers the fireplace up enough to fire, then it. <laughs> and he hates us. Yes, yeah, well, perhaps if we made a big noise, the mouse would jump down the hole. What? Look, leave the mouse where it is, and you jump down the old missus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, that wasn't very kind, was it, Mr. Rogers? Well, you keep out of this, dear. The raid's been on ten minutes, and I haven't received a single manning report yet. Ah, that's it. Hello? Yes? Yeah. 
Oh, righto, Mr. Yeldon. Yes, thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Right, Mr. Yeldon, they're standing by in Kyber Road. Hello? Yeah. Chimney on fire? Right, give me the details, will you? Right. Yes. Yes. Right. yes. Get this down, Mrs. Cole, yes? Yes. Right. There's, that's, the, that's the end, dear. That's the end. Look. Look. We can't have a vital channel of communication blocked by this domestic trivia. There's nothing trivial about a chimney on fire, mate. An enemy bomber could see it miles away. Yes, where is it? Right. Right, yes. A large building next to St. Alden's Church, Mortimer Road. Freddy! A large building next to St. Alden's a Church. Large? Large, a large oh. building. <laughs> building next to St. Alden's Church. Worse than your lot, she is. Mortimer Road. Road, road, road. road. R-O-A-D. Right. Get on to the fire brigade, will you, Mrs. Cole? Right. right. Now what do you think you're up to, Mr. Oh, Manry? please, Vicar, we're very busy. Will you go away? Do you realise you've set the chimney on fire? The stove and they always become a raging fiery furnace. Fiery furnace? Yeah, well, just a minute. This is a large building next to St. Aldham's Church. Yes, I know. Oh, blimey, get out! <laughs> <laughs> he lit it. It was his firelighters that did it. Well, it's never happened before. Normally, they don't burn. What are you doing about it, Wilson? Well, when it happened in the nursery, Nanny put some salt on it. Blimey, <laughs> it's a fire, not a pigeon. <laughs> uh, uh, sir, I have the fire brigade now. Shall I ask them to pop round? Certainly not. Make us a laughing stop at the neighbour and tell them it's a false alarm. Come on, General, you and I up the tower. Shall we take the pumps? Yes, get the pumps. Come on. Excuse me, Mr. Manning. Yes. I had the key of the cupboard. I can bring some bandages. Oh, yes, all right. Here you are. Bog beat, Mr. Manning. What do you say? Bog beat. One barrel of bog beat would put that fire out in a minute. Go do his sensible thing. Oh, but sorry. Oh, shit. Mr. Manning. Mr. Manning. Captain Manning. Captain Manning. What is it, Jones? The chimney's on fire, sir. Well, I know that. Yeah, well, if you lean out, sir, look, you, you can see. It's like a Roman candle to sparks coming out. Will you got to be careful, sir, because. There's a 40-foot drop down here, you know. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Kills me, man. Oh. oh, thank you, Mr. Manning. You saved my life, then. I won't forget that, Mr. Manning. Yes, oh, look, please get out of the way. Yes. Come on, Pike, pa give me a little Yes, sir. Right, get inside, Jim. I can't, Mr. Manning. I'm sitting on the window catch and it's made of cold steel. And it's... <laughs> every time I move, it goes in a funny position. Oh. I don't like it, Mr. Manning. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. You don't like it. There's a ledge out here, and I'm going to inch along it until I can see if I can get to the roof. Right. Hey, what's going on? Get out of the way. Come on, oh, this is an yeah, ARP yeah. matter. Come on, come on out of there. Come on, off there. I'm in an embarrassing position. What are you talking about? <laughs> his trousers are hooked by the gusset. Well, get your trousers off. <laughs> Not in front of his reverence. Come on, you can't say that. Get your trousers off. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Get him off. Get him off. Get him off. Get him off. What's going on here? Leave him alone. Manning, they're trying to take my trousers off. Go be neurotic, Jones. <laughs> What's up? Yes, sir? There's a gap between the tower and the roof. Oh. So if you'll hand me a plank, I'll put it across. But I haven't got a plank. Why should I have a plank? <laughs> here is a ladder here, sir. What about that? Well done. Well done, Walker. Show it out. <laughs> What's the matter? I've relieved myself, sir. It's quite all right, sir. Well, get out of the way. He's not very nice, is he? Yeah, hang on. Right, come on. No. I can't do it that way. Hang on. Bring it up. No, bring back it up. Get, get it off the furnace. Oh, right. 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 Jimmy on five miles. All right, all right. Okay, careful, careful, careful. Right. Oh, 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 oh thank you, Mr. Manning. You saved my life then, you. Come on now. Three times. Right, Find that crumbling bit on the corner. Right, sure, right, sure. Right. I got it, I got it, sir. I don't like this. I get verdigris terrible. You can't. <laughs> Where you gave with that bucket of sand, Mr. Yeatman? I've been polishing that all for 30 years, sir. I can't see it go up like a bundle of kindling. Right. I think it's firm enough there now. Yes, sir. Right, sir. I will test it, sir. I'll test the ladder, sir. Well, hurry up, you old fool, and don't talk so much. Yes, right, oh, sir. It's all right so far. All right, sir. Now, Jones, right. when you get on the other side... Yes, sir. Edge your way along the roof. Yes, sir. See if you can reach the chimney from... Oh. Yeah, oh. Right, sir. See if you can reach the chimney from there. Right, sir. Right, sir. Right. Right. Walker, huh? get down on the catwalk and see if you can work your pump from there. Right, 
Oh, they need water. Water. Oh, uh, yeah. Look, there are plenty of buckets down at the hall. Oh, come on, Godfrey, come on. Uh, aren't you, Gunny? No, no, I'm going to pass it through. Come on, Granddad, hurry up. Mr. Manorin! Mr. Manorin! If I had a, if I had a bucket of water, I could go down the chimney. Fast water, fast water, water, water. back the water. Hurry up, hurry up! Oh, oh. There you are. More? Oh, Lord. Water coming! Water coming! Water coming! Come on. Gotcha. Water coming! Water coming! Water coming! Right. Water coming! Oh! Jeez! <laughs> 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 I can feel it. <laughs> You're drowning it, man. <laughs> oh my fucking god. <laughs> Holy shit, bro. Poor oh, Godfrey. Mr. Mandarin! Mr. Mandarin! If I slide down the roof, I can get next to the chimney. I draw myself up to my full height, and I will pour the water down the chimney. Don't talk so much and get on with it, Chris. Very good job. Right away, sir. Right away, sir. <laughs> Oh, God. That's going to hurt. fucking humor great moments plenty of memorable ones right now and man just i wanted more i was left wanting more man i just didn't want it to end maybe you guys felt the same way we got to talk about it thank you uh and, and i gotta say my man uh, freaking wilson lazy as fuck man you don't want it. why don't you get it yourself man it's your place hold on a second thank you guys thank you listen buddy this town is not big enough for both of us. I felt like I'm watching a Western. I don't know which one, but, uh, you know, add some Western kind of vibes there. Uh, you know, a little cowboy action there. And, man, this created a, a crazy fucking episode. A lot of goofy moments here. Um, 
you know, uh, most people are not going to like the cold steel. And my boy Jonesy in some, I guess, compromising or or he was in a pickle uh, in some in some difficult spots that if he just moved a little bit, man, he was going to be in some pain. So uh, I think probably all of us will agree. Uh, the beginning, ep- you know, portion of the episode was great with, you know, with the uh, with the canned strings, you know, with the all that stuff. And then we finding out that there's some uh, ARP is going to have to share because, you know, they've been in a bad scenario where shit's got fucked up and they need a place to be at. So that whole beginning was great. But I, I think we might all agree that that ending with the roof scene and bringing the water back and forth has to be one of the funniest moments that we've seen on the show. It's up there now. Uh, for me, such a great moment. Uh, a lot of crazy things. I did see some flashing red shit pop up on the screen. I don't know what the fuck that was. Uh, lost connection. I don't know that part of the shit, but um, I should. Yeah, it caught me by surprise there for a second. But uh, Jonesy, brilliant as always, man. You know, when he had that cold steel and he popped it on the uh, piece of paper, uh, you know, and the warden was just feared, you know, fearful. But, man, I really do enjoy the rivalry uh, between the warden and, 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 and Captain Mannering. You, you can tell, obviously, that they don't like each other, uh, you know, very much. So I thought it was great humor um, bringing in, you know, both these guys, obviously, you know, uh, in, in a confined space, shared, uh, you know, you're sharing resources, essentially, you know, with the church hall. Um and, you know, you got this line, you know, there's a line in the dirt. Hey, you know, essentially uh, chalk in the line. But uh, where are you like, hey, that's my side. That's your side. That's my phone. No, that's not your phone. Uh, you know, and then they're, you know, waxing on, waxing off. He's, he's rubbing it. Uh, Warden said a funny line. I can uh, put the line more than you can rub it. You know, that, I don't know. My mind hit the fucking dirt. Uh, as always, but yeah, there was such great moments there. Um, Jonesy bravery is always, you know, him volunteering constantly. Uh, we loved how, Hey, Mr. Manor, he saved my life. Not once, not twice, not three times. Then fucking, uh, you know, the warden is saving his life as well, man. You remind me of Mr. Mannering, uh, Captain Mannering and shit. And, oh man, what a great moment there. How many times is, I, I, lo- I done lost it. Freaking uh, count how many times Jonesy falling and goofing up and tripping over shit. And, and you know, I was also thinking that could potentially happen to Mr. Marin because he's not too far off with Jonesy and, like, falling into water, you know, in, in many scenarios, tripping over shit, you know, losing his hat that little bit with the... Um, hand string and everybody's knocking his fucking hat left and right uh then the guy cutting the string was funny too you know that's one way to get through uh this stuff there but yeah that whole bit was great then you have even the lady uh who's recording shit she had me dying and she's you know a little it was taking a long time to get it rude uh you know how she answered the phone everything i don't know she she, she just had me dying there so i think this is another spectacular episode wasn't fucking lazy as fuck man listen you know godfrey's a little bit harder to move and shit to get stuff so my man's wasn't even bitching about anything. He did. He's asked to do something. He just does it. But you could see Wilson. There's a lot of times he has this little, little temper tantrum, or he's moaning and shit. Uh, you know, like he's called Pilkington or some shit, man. Because man, he'd be moaning a lot. You know, he 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 always mumbling a little bit of shit. Uh, but yeah, he, I found the moaning a lot more on this episode. Uh, Pike was great. Again, I think Pike's line. Um, you know, this town ain't big enough for, you know, essentially, uh, for the both of us. And, and he's, he's, he's looking mighty big cause he's behind, he's behind the guy. Yeah. And he's like, this town's not big enough for both of us. So I think this was a fantastic episode. Um, you know, um, Jonesy falling, hitting the pole, uh, you know, the, the fire bit and stuff, which was a recipe for, you know, uh, uh, a success on this episode, but it was a recipe for disaster at the same time. And you knew with it, putting that fire, it was looking pretty big. It was looking pretty big. So when the phone call hits and stuff like that, and they're talking about this big place fire, I'm already jumping and thinking, all right, it's, it's got to be this fucking place and shit. So when they finally realize, I, I don't blame them because they didn't want to call in the fire brigade because 
you wouldn't want to be like essentially like the laughing stock. You know what I mean? You're a bunch of, you know, goofballs and, and, or doofuses like myself. So, uh, you know, they didn't want to be the laughing stock. But at the end of the day, man, you know, they dropped the fucking ladder. Uh, you got no choice. Sometimes you're such a scenario. You got to just suck up the pride. So what would you guys think? Great episode for me personally. I've really, really enjoyed it. Uh, you know, that rivalry, those bickering going back and forth, uh, you know, uh, who's the head honcho, who's running the shots when they're standing in, um, you know, in formation and then the ARP is coming in and he's talking and shit. I don't know, man. Warden's voice cracks me up. It was like, I don't know. It felt like high pitched and shit when he's talking. So I was just laughing already. And then he moves them to the side and shit, and they push the, the freaking other group, and then they push him back and shit. Hey, you started it. It fucking feels like, you know, it feels like a high school drama or kids uh, beefing and, and bickering and arguing. And God, man, uh, I don't know about you all, but this episode made me feel good. I'm smiling. Like, I, I don't know. If my, mood was, if my mood was shit, which it wasn't, I feel like, damn, this is such a mood booster. And, you know, Jonesy... Mannering, you know, Wilson bitching, Pike, you know, Warden. I mean, all these guys. Godfrey did phenomenal too. Uh, you know, him talking about, I don't know, he was talking about some C shit. Uh, you know, these guys doing the bits back and forth with the uh, can thing. And and th those are cool, man. Uh, you know, um, you've seen a lot of movies where you'll have like a neighbor's house and then the other neighbor's house and they got the can, you know, uh, uh, with the communication, you know, before uh, a lot of walkie talkies shit. Hey, this was some pretty cool shit to see. So I thoroughly enjoyed this episode. Again, I think that ending sequence, uh, you know, with um, splashing on Pike, uh, you know, him hitting the pole, trying to put the put the fire out. I thought all of that was entertaining as fuck. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I am still enjoying it and we still got plenty more of dad's army to go so this is an absolute blast uh these characters are great uh and, and yeah I'm, I'm all for it so thank you so much for watching don't forget to like comment you know the drill guys uh if you enjoy the content don't forget to hit that subscribe it's absolutely free to do shout out to the patches as well we'll see you on the next one um regardless uh thank you for hanging out thanks for stopping in and, and thank you thank you guys so we'll see you soon peace